doubt, the frightful assassin of our view. You can do it by bringing about compulsory education on the subject of narcotics in general. The great marijuana in particular. That is the purpose of this meeting, ladies and gentlemen, to lay the foundation for a nationwide campaign by you to demand by law such compulsory education. Because it is only through enlightenment that this scourge can be wiped out. That movie doesn't sit too well with Stephen Hager, the editor of High Times, a favorite magazine for marijuana lovers. On the other side of the issue is Rob Simmons, international program director of Just Say No. Welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. Um, I don't expect anybody to convince anybody else on this program, by the way, but this was, let's lay out the issue here. Steve, you're for the legalization of drugs, in particular marijuana. Why? Well, I think that film pretty accurately shows what we're up against, which is a very powerful disinformation campaign to uh, convince people that marijuana is a bad thing. And uh, there's a huge information gap here, which we're trying to fill. Most people in America don't realize that George Washington was a marijuana farmer, that the first American flag was made out of marijuana, that the Constitution was written on marijuana. You mean Betsy Ross was in there and she was sewing away and maybe well, taking a little hit on the side? And... I'm not saying that they smoked it, but it was called hemp back then. And hemp and marijuana are exactly the same thing. And every prairie schooner that crossed the West was covered in hemp. And every soldier of Valley Forge wore clothes made out of hemp. And when this country was founded, if you were a farmer, you were required by law to grow the crop. And in, during World War II, the government made a propaganda film to encourage farmers to grow it again, and it was called Hemp for Victory. And there's a tremendous information <laughs> You think gap he's kidding, here. but it, it's, it's true. I mean, the hemp is, is good. You get oil from hemp, right? Ten times as strong as cotton. You can make four uh, times as much paper out of an acre of hemp as you can out of an acre of trees. That's right. Now, the Department of Agriculture did that study in 1916, and since that time, we've deforested half of North America to make paper out of trees. Okay, but let me, let, let's be honest here. Do we, are you interested in the legalization of marijuana in particular because of all the great things you can make out of it? Or do you just want to get high with impunity? My fundamental priority here would be, number one, we've got to stop incarcerating people. We've got 50,000 people in jail, locked up in cages with their lives destroyed right now, whose only crime is that they wanted to smoke marijuana. Mm -hmm. We arrest 300,000 people a year for the possession of marijuana. It's the, by far the biggest problem clogging our criminal justice system. There are several million people, people with glaucoma, with AIDS, people with cancer, uh, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, muscle spasms. These people need it for medicine and it's denied to them. Mm -hmm. So my priority is first, let's stop incarcerating and, and destroying people's lives because of this and then let's get the sick people the medicine that they need and after that we can talk about whether we can smoke it recreationally okay Rob of course you disagree right why uh, well basically I mean Steve's points are, are interesting ones fortunately they're they're I think misguided in well you don't we disagree to... that hemp is stronger than oh, yeah. cotton and you can get I much more paper wonder. out of all that stuff's true obviously right? the point the point here and in, in, in all these arguments it's it's the issue of individual uh, liberty to do a particular behavior versus the social norm and social actions and what we need to do with social policy. Mm -hmm. We know now marijuana and other drugs, including alcohol and tobacco, are extremely hazardous, addictive, and extremely dangerous physiologically, psychologically, and sociologically. We got enough problems with alcohol and tobacco, and of course I'm representing an organization representing our young people. Well, why don't we just make that? That's, well, we that's know, really we what know the that, broader that, uh, issue is. We know that 350,000 people die every year from alcohol and tobacco. And not one person in 15,000 years of known usage has died from marijuana. So well, if we're going to talk about problems, why is it that we have uh, a campaign on television for $300 million a day, we are bombarded with disinformation about marijuana, and the Partnership for Drug Free America doesn't say one word about alcohol and tobacco. And I, okay, at that point, why, why not? Well, let's totally make, make alcohol that. and tobacco I illegal. Totally, How about totally agree that? with that. We're, our focus with young people is tobacco and alcohol are the number one gateway drugs. 
So we focus on that 100%. What are the gateway drugs? Gateway yeah. means leading to other substances. So if you smoke the Marlboro, you're going to get heroin in a few No, years. no. <laughs> the, you know, what, but obviously what that Mother's means is that... Mother's milk leads to everything. When, then, you, when, you interview, when you interview users of other... <laughs> <laughs> well, you brought it up. Yeah, no, I didn't bring that up. I, I, the point is that when you ask users where did they start? They started, in most cases, with tobacco and alcohol. So I totally agree with you in that we have uh, certainly want to get the a partnership to include tobacco and alcohol ads, but it's still the point here is we already have enough problems in our society. Why do we not need to legalize and create increased interest because, in okay, other drugs? Hang on That's the point. We've got a lot to talk about here. We have to take a break now, but joining us next is a staunch propon proponent for the legalization of drugs and a man whose occupation is to stop it. Stay tuned. What are you doing with this? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I mean, you know what to do when someone offers you drugs. Just say no. You want to hit? No. That was, of course, from the HBO show Dream On. Welcome back. Dr. Andrew Mecca is director of the Department of Alcohol and Drug Programs of the state of California. He also chairs the Governor's Policy Council on Drug Abuse Issues. Also joining us is Dr. Lester Grinspoon, associate professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School and author of 14 books, including many which call for the, uh, for the legalization of drugs. Welcome. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate you being here. Well, you heard two sides of the issue here. Uh, now, d tell me, d from your perspective as a doctor, as a psychiatrist, what, what's the case for legalizing drugs? Well, when I first started to study marijuana in 1967, um, I believed the common wisdom that marijuana was a dangerous drug, an exceedingly dangerous drug. And my object was to um, establish medical um, scientific evidence that, that, that established this in a way that um, would be persuasive to the young people who weren't listening to uh, those who are saying they shouldn't use this. But what I learned through this study was that I had been brainwashed like everyone else. That, um, and the reason I titled that book Marijuana Reconsidered is because I had to reconsider the issue. Marijuana, while it's not a harmless substance, there is no such thing as a harmless drug, is so much less harmful than either alcohol or tobacco that uh, it makes a travesty of any uh, of the so-called uh, drug laws. And uh, I think that um, one has to view, um, well, I'm not advocating that people use cannabis. I think that uh, one has to balance the inherent psychopharmacological properties of the drug itself against the harmfulness of the prohibition. The fact that uh, we are arresting three to 400,000 people, mostly young people, every year. Uh, we're criminalizing those people. The invasion of our civil liberties, which is taking place as a consequence of this. And also the fact that we are trampling uh, the rights of those people who believe that marijuana is useful to them for a whole variety of reasons. Okay, I want to get into the medical uh, issues and, and the beneficial uses, as you say, for, for marijuana. Don't the police and the Justice Department have better things to do than bust people for smoking a joint? Well, you know, you're talking about marijuana, and yet the focus of this was legalization of drugs. That's true. And the bottom line is that the social consequences of alcohol and drug abuse in this country are devastating. Um, the alcohol is legal. The other drugs cigarettes, are. Cigarettes result do you, do in you see a hypocrisy there? Well, actually, no, what I, actually what I hear is invitation to exasperate a situation that's already difficult and yet we're just about entering the second generation of reduction in cigarette smoking just when we're making progress in, in precipitous decline in alcohol consumption as america as a culture matures and we're coming to grips with the appropriate use for instance ceremonial ritualistic use of alcohol and a, a precipitous decline next decline in cigarette smoking 
You're talking about legalizing now drugs that are even more potent, more dangerous. But the fact remains that alcohol is that you can go home after a tough day and have a martini. You can buy a 12-pack of Schlitz malt liquor, tall boys, knock them back, get blotto, and you're okay. I go home after a, t a tough day. If I smoke a joint, I'm in danger of being arrested. Is that fair? Of but losing your house, of your car, of your family, of having your whole life destroyed because you were caught with a single marijuana cigarette. But if we get back into this hemp thing, I, I think Ralph Lauren and Armani should be here. Sorry, I was speaking. <laughs> That's true. They could have a whole new life. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, Dr. Mickey, you mentioned that cigarette smoking is declining, and that's absolutely true, but that's without the benefit of a prohibition. That is, as people understand the dangers of cigarette smoking, they stop smoking. Just okay. So you would propose to make readily available, a, a, which you acknowledge is a dangerous drug. In other words, we know that through high times, the seeds that were brought from Chiang Mai, Thailand, during the Vietnam War to Maui, you voted at high, or pot of the year, three years running. King, <laughs> King. Thomas Jefferson was the first marijuana seed <laughs> smuggler. He the, smuggled the best in indica out of China illegally the, through France. The bottom well, line is the tetrahydrocannabinol content has gone up. It's a dangerous drug. You it brought up a black protein point. substance in the synaptic cliff. W it, it, if true. you foresee legalization, w in, in what way is it available to people? I mean, is it on the, in the corner grocery store, tomatoes, apples, <laughs> a bud of sensimia? Uh, I mean, what... How do, we, how do we distribute this stuff? How do we sell it? You see, I, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I, I think that this country has to now acknowledge that the, the drug war is a failure, prohibition is a failure, and we have to explore other possibilities. We, we should really form a government permission, a commission to look at what are other possibilities, other ways of dealing with this problem. Now, one notion that I have, which is uh, uh, probably pretty naive, but it seems to me that one should... Um, take all drugs, including alcohol and tobacco, and um, tax them according to the harmfulness they impose on our society. That is to say, uh, if you look at tobacco, by some uh, data it's costing us um, about $23 billion in medical costs and $42 billion in lost productivity, a total of about $65 billion. You add a lot for education and research. You divide that by the number of packs, $2.25 a pack. It says right on the pack, harmfulness tax, $2.25. It means that's a pretty harmful substance. Mm -hmm. But it also means if you want to smoke, go ahead and do it. But you're going to pay your own way. I don't want to pay for it. And what about okay, the person who can't pay? Wait, well, we got to go to a commercial. Oh, then, hang on. Then hang he on. can't buy cigarettes. <laughs> we'll be back with a writer who thinks big business plays a big hand in the drug crisis in a minute. was an important crop in Kentucky and Missouri. Then came cheaper imported fibers for cordage, like jute, sisal, and manila hemp. And the culture of hemp in America declined. American hemp must meet the needs of our Army and Navy, as well as of our industries. In 1942, patriotic farmers, at the government's request, planted 36,000 acres of seed hemp, an increase of several thousand percent. The goal for 1943 is 50,000 acres of seed hemp. Should we just say yes to drugs? Dr. Lester Grinspoon and Stephen Hager think we should. Dr. Andrew Mecca and Rob Simmons still say no. Linda Feldman has another point of view. She's a columnist for the LA Times. In 1990, she wrote an article for Rolling Stone magazine concerning America's big corporations involvement with the manufacturing of South American cocaine. Thank you for being here. You're Appreciate welcome. it. Um, I don't want this show to be a referendum on marijuana. There are a lot of other, uh, other issues, other drugs, and you have a very interesting take on the cocaine problem. Now, how does big oil figure into big coke? Well, big oil also has subsidiary companies in the big chemical business. And uh, every year, approximately uh, 12 million pounds of essential chemicals are exported to Colombia and other countries that process the cocaine paste. And before it gets into paste form, they usually use things like lye and kerosene and uh, sulfuric acid. And there's approximately 3,000 tons of this stuff. In order to put it into powder, they need the essential chemicals. Otherwise, it would be a cottage industry. And this is where the chemical companies legally sell 
the essential chemicals to Colombia. And uh, it's totally legal in this Now, country. is it your contention that the uh, oil companies, uh, Exxon, for instance, know what these chemicals are being used for? They say that um, approximately all of the 12 million pounds are used for purposes that are uh, part of the industry in Colombia. Unfortunately, uh, one of the reasons you use uh, methyl ethyl ketone is for making of rubber cement. Uh, but there isn't any rubber cement factory in Colombia. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, there is uh, just so much methyl ethyl ketone that you can use for the cleaning of oil feeds, which is another very uh, legal and good use for it. As I understand it, uh, between 1982 and 1988, the exports of these, these chemicals to the Andean region doubled. That's correct. Uh, gee, wonder why. Uh, what's the administration doing about this? How's our war on drugs faring when it comes up against the oil companies? Well, unfortunately, Chemical the war on drugs is being fought, fought, it seems to me, on the wrong battlefield. They're being fought, it's being fought through the military and through the military budget. About $450 million was recently allocated to fight the war on drugs in the jungles. Um, the um, increase in the cocaine exports during the so-called Just Say No years was done because the companies were expecting a bill to come down that would limit the, uh, the sales to new customers. And the uh, stockpiling began during that time. Are we sort of winking at this? Is our government winking at no, this? No, I don't think so. Um, well, maybe a little wink. Maybe just a little <laughs> wink. Um, the uh, economic summit in, in, uh, in Houston had 83 propositions. Number 79 was the one that dealt with the worldwide selling of, uh, of these essential chemicals to the Andean region. Um, right now, a task force supposedly has been established to study it for a year. But in the meantime, hey, business as usual. Business as usual. Rob, Dr. Mecca, do, do, any of you, uh, do either of you favor sending in the troops to Colombia? Let's burn them fields of coca and all that? Well, um, I, we, you know, I can't comment representing a program that is focused on prevention on some of the issues of interdiction and, and supplies, <coughs> that supply side. But I can say this about the war on drugs, uh, is that we have made a significant difference in the area of prevention and treatment. An increasing number of dollars and programs have shown to be working. We've, We've also doubled wait, the wait, prison wait, population finish. in America. Hey, let me finish, and we let me now have more statement. prisoners per capita than any other nation in the world. I'm talking about prevention. It's, it's the cost. No, I'm talking about. A lot of people don't agree with that. They say, oh, come on, you know, drug you use, look at, cocaine okay, use has been declining at, since the mid-80s. It'll continue the, to decline as the population ages. Kids, and, how about asking kids, how they th what do they feel right now about drugs, including alcohol and tobacco? It is all down. <laughs> More that kids is, are drinking now than before. Is the, is no, the no, no, but it's actually gone down, too, as far as drinking. Yeah, not as much as other drugs. Young women are smoking tobacco than before. No, no, it's also no, gone down no, as far as, no, as, far as young alcohol. Women. Young women are smoking now. Oh, young women. I'm, talk, yes, I'm talking well, about all That's 50% of young people. people. But I'm, I'm including <laughs> all young people. The point here is that prevention... <laughs> young women are smoking more. You're not addressing the point. <laughs> well, no, no my, the point is that although reefer madness is the reaction back in 1937, since the 1980s, <clears throat> the prevention programs that have focused on young people uh, learning life skills and doing positive things in their life, which is really what prevention is all about, those are the issues that have really made a difference on young people's lives. And there's just a wealth of programs that Annie knows very well about here in the state of California and nationally but that have really made battle. a difference. It's a losing battle. Why? Okay. I mean, demand Hang reduction is a, a demand reduction is the battle. Supply is the losing battle. It's demand reduction. That's what we want to okay. educate our Better young people. Better through uh, while ever there's a demand, there will be the supply. And the, the wonderful part in terms of turning the corner what? is the fact that finally this country is investing. Um, in demand reduction strategies. Okay, I've got, I want to stop you there because we have to go to a commercial. We'll ask the question, will demand always be there when we come back in a minute? The grand opening of Carpet Barn's newest store is a very good reason to celebrate with a huge grand opening sale at all Carpet Barn stores. Save to 47% on a huge selection of quality carpet by Stainmaster. Oh. Oh. Brain cigarettes I ever tasted. Here, Burma, try one of these on your algebra. What are they? I don't know. We tried Tony's giggle water, let's try his giggle weed. <laughs> <laughs> view of that. <laughs> <laughs> you 
back discussing the possibility of perhaps legalizing drugs. Let me put it to you this way. People like to get high. Whether it's alcohol or coke or grass, people like to get high and always have and always will. So who are you to stand in their way? <laughs> I, I, I think the general public is, is unanimously in support of maintaining the current laws against drugs. And, and I, would pose, I would pose to anyone... But that's not the point. Any naysayer, I would pose three questions to anyone that would even think of legalizing as a public health approach to this epidemic that's been the number one cause of death in this country. Would you supply all drugs to people of all ages? Cocaine? I don't think... Yeah. Let's dispatch with the children. I don't think anybody believes that you should give cigarettes, but, alcohol, coke, grass, heroin, but, anything to children. Then, then the, the rationale, the rationale is to stuff. eliminate the black market. 50% of the black market is for kids 18 and under. Is it a health issue or is it a moral issue to you? Hang on a sec, you'll get a chance. <laughs> Hang on. Is it a health issue or is it a moral issue to you? Oh, it's a, it's a health issue. Okay, more people die as a result of alcohol and tobacco abuse than all other illicit drugs combined. And, so let's and make those illegal. they're available. And so you're going to make readily available more drugs that are actually more potent. Hey, as so, you say, as, as everybody agrees, all these other drugs are readily available too. Oh, it's no, just no, no, that they're there's illegal. economic barriers. If you, if you legalize these, I was... I was well, if they were, heroin, they were so hard to get, what why is there a problem? the government the right to take the medicinal plants out of the cultivation of the people and say the people can't have these medicines that they've had for thousands of years? Even the, if the it's not a medicine. Alone well, costs, even if it's not a medicine, it, even if it just gets you high, so does alcohol. Heroin in Southeast Asia legal. was readily available and very inexpensive, and lots of GIs. I ran the drug programs in Vietnam. Lots of GIs used it. When they came back to How the many US, drank? Lots of people drank, but okay. it was readily Maybe available. trying to escape but the, a terrible war. But the war. model, what you're talking about, is when there's availability and when there is not economic, and when, when the laws don't exist, people will use it and self-medicate to self-destruction. It's not just, if it was just you, you wanted to shoot heroin and take cocaine and smoke your hemp, be fine, except then you're laying in the street, driving a car, incapacitated. We're having to pay the health care premiums as a result. We have to pay it for tobacco. Louis Armstrong oh. smoked marijuana hey, every day of his life and was Rob, the greatest you, trumpet you player that ever lived. Sure. Hey, will you address the hypocrisy here for me? Because, you know, whether you say grass and coke is bad for you or good for you or whatever it might be, there is a central well, it's hypocrisy it's, it's definitely not good for no, you No, it's not good, good for you, for as it. even the good I, doctor will, will claim. But there's an essential hypocrisy here. Well, the question... You say that tobacco and alcohol, right. fine. We, we promote the growth of tobacco. Well, here's the question. 300,000 people a you year. Can't, if, if today, right now, this country had no history of tobacco and alcohol use, with what we know about tobacco and alcohol, it would never be legal. It has a history but, of cocaine and marijuana use. Uh, but the, hi oh, but the history, there's a big, oh, there's a big yeah. difference between the, a very There were no prohibition yeah. laws when this country started. started. Is, that, is that some people prefer the alcohol, point is, that's their drug of choice, and they're in power. The point is, these are very harmful substances. And the question is, because we have legitimized a two harmful substances, does that mean we're going to now legitimize all the other harmful substances? Maybe we, well, how about making sense? those harmful substances illegal then? That's an issue to that be, a lot of people be, will uh, say. It has, consistent. It has, but it has your, tried your to issue so. here is to legalize other drugs. It's, well, I so, think one issue speaks to the other. No, no, it doesn't. Oh, yes, do you, it does. do you, no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you going to legalize <laughs> cocaine? And as we've discovered, as now crack becomes available, which is less expensive, more people are using it, we've got 72,000 babies a year just in California being exposed. Prohibition but, doesn't work. Oh, oh. <laughs> how many more babies perhaps are we going to have if it's readily available? No, Maybe education. No. The bottom line is interdiction is beginning to work. I just got back from Spain, worked with the military intelligence over there. 30% of the cocaine su world supplies are now being diverted to Europe because it's a new market the and figures I've heard interdiction we're interdicting work. about 10%. But you can't just throw figures out. I mean, that's well, my job. <laughs> but I'm, that's my Your official job. Your figures are okay I, and my figures are My figures are, are accurate. Uh, well, so are mine. I mean, no, this came no, from the DEA, just, this 10% no. figure. The Coast Guard says we're only catching about 10%. You know, the, Ron, the, the bottom line is cocaine, the price of cocaine in Los Angeles has gone down to $6,000 a kilo. And that's far How less than it used to be. How much is a fifth of uh, gin? It's readily available. The availability it's, and the, the price of cocaine, exactly. uh, cocaine is more cheaper now and more red, red, readily available than any drug in America. And, and you're trying to tell me that the war on drugs because demand. Is the success, yes. you've taken the most dangerous substances and making them the most readily available, and you've taken the safest and making those the hardest and most expensive. You're saying heroin, cocaine, PCP, and psychedelic drugs are the safest? I'm saying that cannabis is the safest known oh. therapeutically active substance known to man. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Greenstone, how, how safe is cannabis? What is it used for medicinally? And how about coke? M uh, morphine and cocaine you can get out of, a, out of a pharmacy. That's legal for medical use. Cannabis, no. Why? Cannabis is uh, 
of all the psychoactive drugs, clearly the safest. Uh, it is um, a drug which is not addicting. There have been many myths about uh, uh, cannabis. There continue to be many myths. Uh, the so-called new research of the Partnership uh, for Drug-Free America is largely uh, propagating these new myths. It is a drug which is much safer than either alcohol or tobacco. Furthermore, it has some very important medicinal uses, and part of the price that we're paying for this prohibition is that people who uh, have uh, legitimate needs uh, for uh, uh, cannabis, people who suffer from nausea and vomiting, who, uh, cancer chemotherapy patients, patients who suffer muscle spasm, multiple sclerosis, paraplegic, and so forth, epi certain kinds of epileptics, uh, most recently people with AIDS, who uh, uh, have nausea both as a consequence of the illness and the uh, AZT which they get, these people not only can now eat, but they actually gain weight. But uh, this, we are now in the process of writing a book on this and collecting uh, anecdotes on this, and it's really heartrending the way these people who are very ill with these diseases have to add another layer of anxiety uh, because they are doing something illegal. And, uh, uh, some of them have had houses confiscated, some of them have gone to jail, and so forth and so Okay, on. so your position is there are legitimate medical uses. We have to go to a commercial. We'll be right back in a minute. In 1958, little Al Bundy made a decision that... your life. This is just how I feel. Drugs get you nowhere. And if people tell you that drugs are cool and that everybody's doing them, they're wrong. We're back with our guests, Rob Simmons, Dr. Lester Grinspoon, Linda Feldman, Dr. Andrew Mecca, and Stephen Hager. I, I want to dispel any notion that I'm here to promote drug use because I was getting a little steamed up there, but it seems to me you're still not addressing my question, which is the central hypocrisy of treating alcohol and tobacco as one thing and all other drugs as another. The fact of the matter is that alcohol and tobacco cause far more misery in this country than all other illicit drugs combined. And you don't seem to be addressing that, and that's why I'm getting steamed up. <laughs> you're, proposing, you're proposing to legalize drugs, though, that would exasperate it. I'm not answer. proposing They're, anything. Well, no, the, the whole the notion question. is, by, in that argument that the hypocrisy exists, therefore legalize it all, yeah. if cocaine... Or make it all illegal. If cocaine, that might be... We, we tried to make alcohol illegal, and the price was greater... And, then, we, and we have a lot more. It in, in, we, into and we have a lot more information. The problem when you that talk about wait a minute, when you talk about who used it 50 years ago or 100 years ago, they didn't have information. They didn't know the damage of tobacco and alcohol and now marijuana and other drugs. We are a lot more. We have a lot more information now than we but did then. But isn't this See, a free society? Oh, Aren't we wait supposed to have the right of choice? Yeah, in these if matters? you're going to do that, you do. How about right. the if I'm not hurting you. If I don't want to drink and I want to smoke a joint instead of drinking, don't Hold I it. have a right as American Hold to do it. that? It's not about that right. It's about when do your rights end Stop. and mine begin and everyone else's begin. And in other words, don't step on me. Well, Linda, Linda can, I'll, I'll get to you. Hang on a second. Linda, explain that a little. Where, where does Steve well, smoking that, a joint trample on your rights? Well, I think when Steve smokes a couple of joints, gets into a car, starts driving, it may infringe on my rights so if I want to cross the you're making the, the case for making alcohol illegal, too. Well, I don't know if I'm making it illegal. I just don't want to compound it that much. Well, yeah, but again, there's this alcohol's okay, but grass is not okay. There, you know, no, we're if they do the same rights. thing, no, why, no, no, not, no, why no. aren't they both treated the same no, way? No, we're talking question. about rights at that point, and rights have to do with when, what is for the good of all and what is for the good of the individual, and I think you have to look at that closely before you decide to make such a big move as to legalize drugs. I'm not Well, we, we already that. have legalized drugs. Alcohol is legal. T correct. Okay, and it so, kills so a lot we're of halfway there already. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, my problem is, is that we're trying to come up with one simple solution, a black and white problem here. And it's not a black and white problem. It's a very complex problem. Legalization hasn't worked, nor has prohibition worked. Uh, the problem has to do with something innate in our society. Uh, I, I'm going to sit here and listen to a doctor tell me that uh, marijuana is not a problem. I heard that 15 years ago about cocaine. And I, I run a treatment facility that has lots of cocaine addicts in it. And the medical profession is now saying there's a problem with cocaine. We don't know who to believe. 
uh, we, we're concerned with uh, legalization uh, and setting up legalizing drugs. Who's going to handle this? The government, right. who we blame for some of the problems anyway. So who's going to do this? You know, the, maybe the oil company. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't know which is worse. Is there a difference? <laughs> Good uh, question. <laughs> the, the problem is is that everybody's trying to be right, and the, the, the solution, if we're going to find the solution, is going to require everyone sitting down and not trying to be right, but trying to find out the common grounds of what's going to work. Mm -hmm. Dr. Grinspoon, you favor the legalization of all drugs. Is that right? PCP? Yeah. No. Yeah. no Blue I, sniffing? I, 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 I favor uh, looking... Uh, first of all, I favor the legalization of marijuana right away. Mm -hmm. I think that... Uh, that, uh, that uh, had we done this uh, some time ago, we would have much more credibility as drug educators about these other drugs. But part of our problem is that we say that uh, PCP is dangerous. These young people say, ah, they told us that about marijuana and so forth. If we could begin to be credible, to begin to be honest about these things, people would begin to believe what, and the way to begin is to legalize marijuana now. Okay. Exactly. Yes, sir. Now, I totally agree with what the gentleman just said. The government has, you know, lied a lot about a lot of different things, and especially with marijuana against alcohol. The big major thing with uh, marijuana, it makes people paranoid because they can go to jail. That's the only thing really wrong with it. Oh, that is ridiculous. No, no, that's no, ridiculous. no, no. That's you can't say that's ridiculous. That's the only thing wrong with marijuana? What about, I'm saying about your okay. lungs, the fact that people wait, wait, smoke. Wait, 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 There's never been a single case marijuana. of can I, can I can I ask? Let, let me not say no. Let let say, finish, and you can talk finish. about all the different that. things that you want to do about lung. But see, the comment right now, right? I, I don't have enough time to even speak on a subject like that because they put <laughs> things in your meat and everything else as far as your your, okay, your do you, body. Do you have a question but I'm saying I'm totally against kids smoking or any drugs or anything like that. But the government issue of putting people in jail instead of actually attacking a crime being done okay you attack the crime that's being done instead of putting somebody in a criminal element for using okay we had a there was a problem uh, he makes a point about government credibility uh and back in the 60s and 70s the government was of course you know reefer madness and stuff and they're telling us and kids found out that it really wasn't true and it destroyed the the government's credibility in that area have you ever smoked grass oh yeah yeah, yeah. Years so you know that it's Late not the 60s. devil yeah. drug that everybody the, well that was know, a problem with movies like how about you Matt? Matt? you mm -hmm. smoke grass in college and if i knew then what i know now i wouldn't have yeah. because what I think is being sold here is the premise that it maybe isn't a dangerous drug. It is a dangerous drug. I don't think you're up for a Supreme Court judgeship. Show me a single dead body from marijuana. No, you know, I really, I feel there's one, because I love, I love the repartee, and it's, it's very stimulating, but there's also millions watching your program. It's a hit who are out there, who, whose families have suffered optimistic. children's losses, or yes, the ones that, that are in jail. Excuse me. The fact is, there are a lot of people who have been personally touched by this problem, the magnitude of it, who might be sitting back going, oh, my Lord, is, are they really talking about legalizing? I need to, to reinforce the fact there isn't a responsible, publicly elected official out here who would lead this country towards legalization of drugs, well, including there marijuana. Was, there was George, yes, sure, with George Schultz. I debated George, George Schultz in Philadelphia. And he William acknowledges Jr., he's off the Milton mark. Friedman. We're not the only ones talking Milton about Friedman. it. David Galbraith just ran for the governorship of Kentucky and the Democratic platform uh, to legalize marijuana it's, in Kentucky. It's wonderful seeing the cerebral academicians who sit behind closed doors dreaming of what the ideal economy would be. Isn't that what market want? forces? No, I've worked you in all 58 about the, counties the, in the city. The casualties of marijuana use, the casualties are the sick people I can't get it as many. Hang on a sec. Right. Guess what? Got to go to another commercial. Be right back. <laughs> use marijuana and other such plants. I know quite a few people who are smoking on a pretty regular basis. I think now it's pretty much generally accepted by the public that uh, uh, marijuana is a safe recreational drug. It's the safest, most beneficial drug ever known to man. We're back. Much of the harm associated with drug use really stems not from the use itself, but the crime connected with it. And proponents of legalization say, hey, legalize it, and you eliminate the violent crime. Anybody? Wrong. Wrong. What about, what about the uh, mom who's uh, pregnant and is using crack cocaine? 
What about the violence she perpetrates on the fetus? Mm -hmm. What about the crime perpetrated by people who go on crack runs and then become paranoid and violent as a result of the drug on other individuals? Those are not crimes to support their habit. And also, what if the drug was readily available and then their life was centered around? We know that people self-medicate with co cocaine when it's readily available till they die rather than eat and sleep. Mm -hmm. What about the, the welfare costs, the health costs, the violence, the criminal justice costs associated? And it has nothing to do with crime associated with trying to steal to support their habit. Steve, it is one of the spurious arguments crazed, ever made. Crazed, paranoid crack addicts out there. There are a lot of uh, crazed people run, running around on alcohol, too. But I think that the law itself is causing more damage to our society than the use of the substance. And that's the thing that we have to address. We are arresting 300,000 people every year who, who have, are not committing a crime. All they're doing is they're saying, hey, I don't think this is bad for me and I want to use it. Maybe I don't want to drink alcohol. Maybe I want this instead. And, and you're taking those people and you're throwing them into a criminal environment for no reason. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, there's been a lot of talk about uh, how good and bad the effects of alcohol and tobacco are. What are some of the negative effects of smoking marijuana? What are the health problems associated with it? No one's talked about that yet. Anybody want to talk about that? 43 carcinogens that you smoke, the heat, the method of not smoking. Not one the single case cancer, of lung, lung right, cancer. Right, right. This is such <laughs> disinformation, I can't believe it. Not one case of lung cancer has been attributed to, to marijuana. Why don't we let Dr. Grinspoon tell the truth about marijuana? The truth is people that smoke it live longer than people that don't. Dr. Grinspoon, you made a study of this. You made a study of this, did you not? Yes. Could you, could you answer his question? Yes, I'll be glad to. The, um, there have been many um, adverse effects attributed to marijuana. The government of the United Sp States spent a lot of money uh, during the 60s and 70s trying to prove these assertions. Uh, it, the, the proof failed. Uh, the uh, reasoning then went, well, that's because Americans don't use marijuana, haven't used it long enough and don't use enough of it. So they, um, they financed studies in, um, in Costa Rica, in Greece and Jamaica. These were all studies of approximately 30 subjects and 30 controls. Uh, each of them, the average number of joints a spliff smoked every day was seven, about seven. Um, the average length of use was over 17 years. What adverse effects did they come up with? A goose egg. Very little did they demonstrate. But you're not saying that breathing hot smoke into your lungs is a good thing I was just going to get to that. Now, the one established adverse effect that I believe has to be taken seriously is the work of a California uh, group, uh, Tashkin and his people, who demonstrated that um, uh, smoking cannabis is not good for the lungs, that um, a cannabis cigarette contains four to five times as much par, uh, tar and uh, particulate matter as a tobacco cigarette. Uh, but if you think of how much uh, a marijuana user smokes. I mean, it isn't like, you know, we, we think of lung cancer, uh, 20 pack years you have to have, well, or that's one pack a, a day for 20 years or two packs a day for, for 10 years. There are very few, even at the ratio of one to four or one to five, uh, 20 pack year uh, cannabis smokers. Furthermore, uh, it, you know, someone talked about marijuana is much more potent now than it was in the 60s and the 70s. It sounds absurd, but the way to minimize the respiratory effects of cannabis is for people to smoke more potent marijuana. Because as the marijuana is more potent, as, as uh, an investigator by the name of Halpern first demonstrated in the LaGuardia study, people, you give people as, much, people as much marijuana as they want, and they only smoke enough to get the high and no more. So as a consequence, People who smoke more potent marijuana take fewer chokes of it and expose themselves to less risk. Okay. Well, I think we're wrong. It's important to note that uh, you don't have to smoke marijuana. There are millions of people that, that consume it in other ways. Brownies, You don't have right? to smoke right. it. You can <laughs> well, wait, wait. I don't want to address the problem of whether it's good or bad or anything like that. What I want to address the problem is, haven't we learned some lessons from prohibition? What kind of dangers it produces? I mean, we've seen how, how it boosts the price of alcohol, how the big mafias and whatever go after the money, and it causes all this violence and other things, all right? Now, there's not only violence going on over in Colombia, people dying in Colombia, there's violence going on over here. Now, I know, I know there's a lot of health risks against drugs, there's a lot of health risks against alcohol, everything like that. 
but weren't we weren't we really just talking about pro prohibition and how dangerous that is? Okay. I mean, what kind of takes away our rights, doesn't it? In some prohibition didn't work with alcohol, so why should it work with anything well, else? Let me let me you asked the question on before about the crime issue. Uh, if anybody thinks that be, by legalizing any of the products uh, of other substances that there's not going to be crime, for example, if if the government had a two te two percent tetrahydrocannabinol cigarette or four percent, whatever it is. There's going to be a 10% and a 12% version, which you think actually is, believe is more, as more helpful. That's going to be out there on the street. So the issue of crime, to expect there's no going to be black market, is, is ridiculous. We know there's going to be a black market. Black market tobacco and alcohol. Uh, is yeah. And after Holland decriminalized and drugs, on that. Yeah. if, we'll if drug-related crime dropped, after Holland decriminalized drugs. If High Times and Lester are going to promote as a safe physiological drug, what about Lester? Come on, you, now you're going to be our phys resident physician. Are there any perception or behavioral response times and whatever that make it dangerous for somebody to smoke dope and drive, operate machinery in a factory where what, what increasing impact accidents have, have been attributed to? What impact does it have on the so, development of adolescents? We know that's a very serious problem in the growing, with young people growing again, up. Again, what about alcohol and tobacco? You're right. The, but well, there's much, but yes, there's more likely, right. Ron, there's much more <laughs> likelihood, in, and, and comment to what Andy said, there's much more likelihood that we're, we would eventually, with the information we have, legal, illegalize again or make it illegal for tobacco and alcohol than there is to condone all of that and go ahead and say, well, we, ca we can't. You might as well throw the bill right, 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 right out the window. Wrong, Rob, aren't we still subsidizing tobacco growers? Yeah, I know, and that's that, that's the a policy is, we have to through question. demand. Ooh, it sounds like hypocrisy we're gonna, to me. Everyone here is going to live to see a smokeless America. We are making progress with cigarette smoking. That's, that's not your consumption. role to demand that people not smoke anything. It's this choice. country started. Oh, there were no that. prohibition laws at all. That's the way it's supposed to be. What's the goal? What's the, what are you saying? What's the goal of legalizing drugs? Yeah. What what is the goal? I don't understand it. To stop arresting I, I people and an incarcerating issue, them. For many people, it's an issue of civil rights. We're at a, we're running out of time here. I got to go to another commercial. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Emotional consideration provided by Music Express with offices in Los Angeles and on the East Coast. For your corporate limousine needs anywhere in the U.S. and the world, call Music Express. We're back. Keep it up for D.A. Young and Dr. Bombay. Okay, I want to thank our guests. Rob Simmons, Dr. Lester Grinspoon, Linda Feldman, Dr. Andrew Mecca, and Stephen Hager. Well, hey, I want to say again, we are not promoting the use of any drug here, including tobacco and alcohol. We can all agree to disagree. This is America. We can go have a beer on it later, right? We're out of here. They're called MIAs, soldiers missing in action. But what action is being taken to bring them home? Hear both sides of the story from the MIA's families and those with the power to bring them back alive tomorrow on The Ron Reagan Show.